Did I throw it all the way out? Which camera? This camera. Okay. I don't know that I can get through this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm Alan with REI, and this is my 125 mile review of the Hoka Rincon 3. So the Rincon, I was introduced during one of our um, REI events and I got to try it and I was like, wow, I was in love with it, but I definitely didn't feel like I needed another shoe at that moment. So it's kind of one of those weird things where you're excited to be like, oh, I think I need a new shoe. Um, and when I did need a new shoe, I completely went towards it's the ones that I thought I wanted for a couple of years, which were the Rincon lines. This is my pair. So I'm really excited to talk about them because they've been one of my favorite shoes recently. So the Rincon 3, I think, is a great shoe for those folks that are looking to incorporate maybe a faster shoe um, while still wanting a little bit more of a cushioned ride. This can be a shoe that you incorporate into a rotation of other shoes that you would have already. So perhaps like a daily trainer, a recovery shoe, and uh, a fast shoe, a fast training shoe. Hoka, you know, has got a pretty well-known line. Shoes to the right of me are the Bondi line. The Bondi is kind of the Hoka shoe that lots of folks are familiar with. It's a shoe that lots of people work in. Um, it's giving you a lot of stability, a lot of cushion. The family to the left of me is the Clifton family. Um, and this shoe is pretty rad. It's kind of like the daily trainer um, by Hoka. So it's giving you a lot of what you like in the Hoka line, some of that cushion. Uh, but also gives you some of that durability to put more miles in to kind of make you feel comfortable on your feet. Um, and then you have the Rincon, and the Rincon is kind of like um, the fast shoe, the speed shoe. So I'm gonna talk about the shoe uh, from top to bottom. So I'll start with the upper, and if we're starting with the upper, the first thing I notice is the color. It looks pretty rad. I really like this color, the juxtaposition of the brightness on there. When I go out to run on days that are perhaps a little bit gloomier, when they're rainier, when perhaps I'm not as excited to run, psychologically I feel a lot better. I kind of tend to smile when I see these on my feet just because the colors are so bright. I often tell myself that like colors aren't important, especially in running shoes, but like I really like uh, the way the shoe looks when I put them on. <laughs> Oh my god. It's a lot of legs. Going further into the upper, this collar, uh, for a lightweight shoe, it's actually a really comfortable and thick collar. So I, I like that it kind of hugs the back of my foot a little bit more. I do like that this, this uh, shoe gives you a little bit of a roomy fit. Putting your hand through there and kind of moving it around, you can see that it's kind of like a sandwich layer of um, that kind of upper portion. So you still get that breathability, but it's not completely just open air mesh. Uh, which is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of that protection. Obviously, I might need it. I'm running in some muddy places, so I appreciate that it's that like really thin double layered upper. Going towards the midsole, the midsole is where most of the ride comes from. It's where most of the experience comes from. And Hoka is known for their stack height, their cushion. So you're going to have 29 millimeters um, in the heel, going with a five millimeter drop to about 24 millimeters um, out in the toe. I like that it gives me a lot of that cushion. It's the reason that I keep reaching for it. It gives me that comfortable ride throughout. They did do things uh, to the shoe in other places that are kind of small. For example, like this pull tab. Some people don't dig pull tabs. I love them, probably because I love carabiners and I put everything on a carabiner. So I'll, I'll put these shoes and just kind of use them to put them on or off. Like for me, that makes a big difference. Also, um, the Rincon 3 is the lightest weight Rincon they've made. First shoe on the men's side, size around nine, is gonna be about 7.7 .7 ounces. Yeah, that seems like first shoe. I was like, there's no way they got it that light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then kind of moving on to the outsole. One of the things that I like about the outsole is this reinforced rubber. What they've done is that they've updated a little bit of the outsole to kind of add more rubber where most people would kind of be striking most often. My shoes are pretty dirty. <laughs> so, but you can see on the bottom here, um, they've added a little bit of that rubber where people heel strike. But certainly on the forefoot, you have a lot more grip in that space and you can kind of see that it, it will kind of bite in a little bit more. So not only from a durability standpoint, but I like that it gives you a little bit more confidence when you're running on it. And it goes all the way up to um, the front part of the toe. I'm never really running like this, uh, but I'm definitely almost falling like this sometimes. So it gives me that kind of security in that space. So some of the things that I wish were a little bit different, I wish the insole was a little bit more easily removable. You can hear that kind of like gluey portion there. That always makes me feel like they don't want me to take it out. This is not a huge deal, and I'm not even saying they should put a different insole. I just think for folks that want to put their own insole in there, I think it's uh, really helpful for them to just be able to have a removable insole really quickly. The tongue is interesting because again, you, you try to pull it and it just doesn't want to even come out. It's really short. As comfortable as the shoe is in all other respects, the tongue is the least comfortable for me. 
Oftentimes the tongue will do this thing where it'll get in between my laces, maybe sometimes like even this thing, and I'm like, what? So I would normally blame myself for anything that a shoe's doing, but it doesn't happen with any other shoes. The other thing I wish was a little bit different is probably the durability of the shoe. I don't know what it'll last up until, but certainly it feels different right now, 125 miles in. I put on the miles fairly fast, um, fairly quickly, I should say. I wasn't running fast. But, uh, you know, they still feel pretty good. There's a noticeable kind of change, though, in the way the cushion feels. I understand that's how time works and that's how materials can, can break down over time. But I wish the cushioning was a little bit more consistent um, this many miles in. I perhaps wouldn't use this shoe as a race day shoe. For me, this shoe, again, makes like speed training accessible because I'm not a person that's super concerned with that. But once I do kind of get into that mindset of like, oh, I need to push pace a little bit more, the first thing I think about is a more responsive shoe. And when I put a more responsive shoe, I know that I can push my pace faster. So for myself, I would probably get a snappier shoe for race day, but I would probably train for the race in this shoe. So that's how I feel about the Rincon 3s. I'd love to hear how you feel about it. Feel free to comment down below, come into an REI store, talk to your footwear specialist, geek out about the shoe, find out if it fits your foot right, and see if you can add this colorful energy. Uh, that seems weird. That seems like a weird thing to say at the end. <laughs>